All right, what's up, everybody? This is Drosios Samuels, and you are tuning in to the Bitcoin Will Come show. And today, we're actually going to be talking about how builders can improve their Bitcoin product launch launches with uh, communities. And so I brought on my uh, good friend, Kevin Pham, uh, as well today, so we can talk a little bit more about this because last week went so well. So, all right, there you go. Kevin, how are you going today? I am doing well. Uh, felt a little under the weather, mm. had the had the normal uh, COVID paranoia, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'm feeling fine. So. All right. Did you go to the doctors or anything? What was that? Did you go to the doctors? Did you feel like you needed to go to the doctors or anything? No, no. It's just every time I get sick, I think I have COVID. So. Yeah, no, fair enough, man. Legit concern at this point in time. Um, okay, so let's let's dive straight into it. Okay, and hopefully you can see on another screen or something, right? Uh, what I can see. Um, yep. All right, excellent. So let me just increase this so others can see and you can see as well. So I just kind of uh, outlined a few things that uh, I think you know we could we could go over today, and this sort of builds upon what we spoke about last week with um, palping. So. Uh, essentially in the Bitcoin world, actually in, in the startup world in general, I've seen this all too often whereby uh, a lot of builders, um, you know, focus sometimes a bit too much on the product and then not enough on the people side, you know, uh, and essentially that's the product market fit, right? And there's two ways you can go about it. You can create, um, of course, focus on creating a really good product. Um, or you could also try the alternative, which is actually, you know, building out sort of relationships beforehand. Um, getting people involved in the idea, the problem, etc., so that when it c does come time to launch, you don't have what I've seen all too often, which is a product launch that just launches to crickets. So, yeah, maybe Kevin, uh, just to start out, you know, what have been your observations as well, um, and what are your what are your thoughts on this on this space or this area? Well, yeah, I think it's totally uh, valid. I'm a very social person. I'm always on social media. Mm. And, um, you know, I always, you know, everybody tells me, you, you got to learn how to code, you got to learn how to build. But I found that there's a lot of developers that come up to me to ask me to help promote their product. And basically, I think it's just a bandwidth issue that when you're building, you're not um, socializing. Mm. Right? Yeah. And then if you're socializing, you're not building. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think it's good to have two of those uh, type, types of... Um, uh, personalities. Also, I think there's these people that are uh, perfectionists mm -hmm. and they're afraid to release their product until it's perfect, but they don't get any feedback. Yeah. Um, my personal experience is that um, I was there when Twitch was, the idea of, of Twitch was created mm -hmm. and uh, Twitch was launched. Mm -hmm. So I think. The Twitch guys, they're the ones that have the most intuitive understanding of building a community and building a tribe. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I noticed from the beginning, you know, uh, they, yeah, they fancy themselves as, you know, um, um, you know, innovators and, you know, people that are going to really change the world and, you know, change cultures and stuff. And, and they, uh, they did a really good job of, you know, just hanging out on Twitter and identifying those mm. people and just having a knack. And the thing is that when, when I met the Twitch guys, mm. Twitch was never um, in people's minds yeah. yet. They were that's the thing. They were authentically surrounding themselves with uh, like mind, mm. and um, they created this uh, group called Wings, which was um, which was another pretty large um, uh, private Twitter group yeah. that was a little bit more formal. Yeah. And um, yeah, they did a really good job of you know creating an identity and um, making people feel special, like they were mm. part of something mm. um, special. <clears throat> and then when they were launched, they already had an inbuilt strong group yep. to evangelize for them. Exactly. And um, yeah, and, and I think um, I think um, the key is yeah authenticity mm. of, of people that you share uh, like. Uh, like mines. Uh, were, were you were you close with Handcash when when they launched? Uh, when when they launched, um, no, I hadn't met um, Alex uh, okay. formally by then. But 
when they did because launch, I know you guys yeah. both came from the BCH community. Yes. You guys both existed then. Yeah, correct. Right. Correct. Correct. Um, so yeah, that was a, a very interesting time. Uh, you know, moving from BCH into into the BC BSV world. And of course, for those who are tuning in um, for the first time and might not be familiar with uh, the, the Bitcoin ecosystem, we often, uh, when we refer to Bitcoin, we're off, often referring to uh, BSV. Um, however, of course, in the in the market or mainstream, most people will know Bitcoin as uh, BTC. Um, and yeah, just wanted to make that distinction. But also, at the same time, um, we have uh, Twitch here. So while Kevin, uh, you were talking, I just brought Twitch up. And so, uh, do you want to just uh, describe to people what uh, Twitch is, um, you know, very simply and easily? Yeah, so Twitch is a very similar application to Twitter, mm. but they um, incorporate Bitcoin by first uh, enabling a monetization scheme to where you have to pay to interact with Twitch and to write to Twitch. But also people have to pay to you, pay you to write to you and to like your posts and to share. Yep. And also um, all your Twitches get saved to the blockchain. So theoretically, your Twitches can follow, you know, your identity and uh, you can own your data. Yep, exactly. And I think, you know, what you were talking about before. Um, so yeah, this is something I definitely noticed with Twitch, right? The Twitch guys, they already started with a pretty strong group um, of people who believed in the vision of what, and what they could do to disrupt, I guess, the Twitter space. Um, yeah. And you can tell that, like, from a storytelling perspective, right, their enemy is Twitter, <laughs> right? What it pretty much yeah. um, Twitter stands for. Um, you could even yeah. see... And, and also, I think, um, kind of capitalism mm -hmm. and Ayn Rand, that's kind of like the deities and, like, the religion mm -hmm. that they all ascribe to. Mm -hmm. So... It's good because it yep. creates like cohesiveness yep. and a feeling of us versus them. But it's bad because whenever you kind of uh, challenge that yeah. uh, culture, yep. yeah, I've, I've heard things, uh, yeah, things don't go well. Yeah. No, I mean, it, you're spot on. And I think this is the, the trouble with uh, communities sometimes, right? Communities can actually be very, um, very powerful um, for both good and bad reasons, right? Uh, by their very nature, communities often um, are exclusive you know so when often when i hear people talk about inclusive communities i think usually what they mean is inclusive co inclusive of people that they like inclusive of people that they they want uh around you know and you know i think twitch uh hats off to them is that they are culture makers because they have definitely created their own like a very strong culture that's very twitch you know and i think these are actually very good signs um of a of a community forming and it's kind of necessary i think to support a product you know um, and this kind of goes back to sort of like failed product launches is like there needs to be some sort of soul you know to a product um, and that yeah. can come in the form of the the people in the community around it and um you know I, I look at sort of artifacts cultural artifacts of twitch you know even here twitch that right they created a bot with a with a dead twitter bird um and i remember uh based right was that a word that uh, popped up in um twitch or something i remember seeing that popping up quite a bit, but there's certain uh, like lexicons um, that, you know, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. I, I would say based is bigger than Twitch. It's just, it's oh, sure. very alt right. Uh, yeah. Yep. So for sure. Um, but I think in terms of things getting popularized, right? Like Twitch definitely does um, have its things. Um, okay. So um, how about onto Hancash side? Um, when was your first sort of uh, exposure to Hancash and what uh -huh. did you see them do good outside of just the wallet itself yeah let me think about that yeah so with hand cash i think it was just like a very just uh intuitive well-built application to me mm. um but also what i think they did well was the whole um the shandle yep. you know with the dollar sign in your name yep uh you you saw people uh, posting that on their Twitter to mm. kind of identify themselves as BSVers, yeah, right. So that was kind of like a uh, yeah social like social signaling, correct. Um, and then you know people would tip you and ping you and you know all that all, all that stuff. So mm. so yeah, so I I think that was cool with um, hand cash that I think the combination of them just creating a very simple easy use app 
Um, and then also the Shandal mm. thing that could be posted anywhere. I think those two things were key. In a, in a, and to, from, my, from what I'm seeing is that their community is basically BSV early adopters yep. that want to test test things out and to you know show people uh, what what um, yeah what uh, what BSV can do. It's interesting, yeah, that you identify that their community of um, the community of people is like um, BSV early adopters because um, <coughs> when 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 I was working with um, the guys at Handcash. You know, they their target. I think they really wanted to kind of focus on like the grandmas, actually, right? Like make a product so easy that like your grandma could use it. Um, yeah. And it, you know, I just brought this up on the screen, right? One thing that I definitely noticed, like probably out of all the the, the BSV products that have been launched, Handcash is probably one of the few ones um, that you know it, it's a wallet, but their popularity has come from not just being intuitive to use, but like it's created, you know, like really strong fans around it, right? Mm-hmm. We've actually gone out and um, done some things. Like I remember there was something called Handcash Friends. Do you remember that? Uh, vaguely, I think. Mm. So let me have a look if I can find it. There was a, a site, uh, pretty much a fan site um, that mm. popped up called mm. Handcash Friends. And mm. I'm hoping that I can find it easily because there was a website that um, actually got made. And essentially, because um, the culture that got created with Handcash, right, was essentially a very, very generous one. Because whenever mm-hmm. somebody was onboarded, they go to Twitter, tweet about yeah, it, yeah. right? And then get yeah, people. That, yeah. Yeah. And behaviorally, that's really fascinating, right? Mm-hmm. That people would go out of their way um, to actually do this. Mm-hmm. And also within the app, you know, um, I remember when this feature was launched, right? The multi, multi-send um, payments. Mm-hmm. Um, people are are using Handcash actually for uh, DMing, right? So I still get like messages on my Handcash with people just sending me like a message of like, "Hope you have a great day," pinged, you know. Oh, nice. But like, they have to send you money to to send you a DM, or yeah, they're sending you messages. Oh, okay. yes, yeah, s- send, sending money to send a DM, um, hmm. and you know, this is I, I just I, again I just I find this very fascinating, um, and uh, oh, forgot to. S- to mention, uh, Richard is uh, tuning in. Hey, Richard, how's it going? Um, so yeah, yeah, no, but I, I think I kind of had that uh, that that um, observational breakthrough about mm. what these communities are, mm. and you know, I, I um, you know, I guess I was pretty critical about these communities because I said they were like a circle jerk yep. or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> they just wanted just to get people on to pump the price. Or yeah. whatever, and that's not a real sustainable use case, mm. or it's a false positive. They're not, you, you know, that's not a sustainable, uh, yeah, use case to, you know, uh, sustain your company. Yeah. Um, but when I really thought about it, it's but yeah, basically what these communities are are BSV early adopters, mm. and um, and yeah, the, yeah, that's that's the people that are um, creating these products. So. At, at the one hand, I, I think it's valid because, you know, mm. if you look at, you know, basically like a technological adoption curve or I forget what that curve is called, but it's, yeah. it's always the early adopters and like the enthusiasts in the beginning, right? Yep. And then as that gets fleshed out, then you go to the, uh, you know, the mainstream adopters and then the laggards yep. and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a valid, um, that's a valid uh, pro- you know, progression or evolution of um, any technology's uh, adoption. And, mm. yeah, I, I think I'm a little harsh on hating on it, but I just want to call it out for what it is because mm. I think a lot of people think we're going to go straight, you know, viral like Snapchat or Facebook yeah. or Instagram, and I'm like, no, uh, it's not. It's not going to happen that quickly. you got to understand where you are. And, um, yeah, and, and the thing is that – so one, one thing I noticed, like um, – for example, like on, on Palping, mm. it's like, all right, stop talking about BSV so much. Start talking about something normal. Yes. Then they talk about something normal because that's what they think they should do mm. as opposed to using it for what is valuable, which yeah. is it's just a connection of BSVers. And my thing is like, you know, if you guys just want to talk shop, talk BSV, yep. just talk BSV. Mm. And if it's built on BSV, then, yeah, we could... Uh, build out cool things but mm-hmm. yeah I, I think it's it's good to be uh honest with entrepreneurs with what yeah with who 
who their real customers are or who their real community is. Correct. And I think that's what informs, right, like how um, Bitcoiners or anybody creating a product, right, is just having a think about the who. You know, and I often talk about this that like, um, and, I, and I think I use this analogy as well. Let me uh, bring that up, sort of fire and wood. So I think, yeah, you and I, Kevin, talked about this, right, in terms of uh, even even with FIA. Um, so for those tuning in, if you're not familiar, the show is sponsored by FIA. Um, we're a consultancy. And uh, we essentially look at um, the people that we help uh, usually have good products, right? So they, they're, they're what we call the wood. And then our company sort of is, is the fire. Um, and we provide sort of uh, the fire on top of good wood. So the stronger the wood, the stronger the fire. Right, and this is why there's sort of that interplay between like products and sort of their launches. So if you have a whole bunch of wood, right, um, and there's no fire, like you can't, you know, you can't build uh, something on, on on top of that, um, or you can't at least like uh, get it to grow. And so, as you know, with um, with fire as well, the more wood you put in, the the bigger the fire can grow, and you want to be able to sustain that. And so we use that analogy a lot um, in terms of uh, even managing um, people, communities, teams, etc. You know, we talk about like furnaces for fires um, because we can also see where a company or a product might grow too fast, you know, the hyper growth. And that can be an issue too. And it just burns everybody in its path, which isn't a good thing either. Um, and so, you know, with the, I, I guess with the, the fire analogy and good relationships, um, I think what we're trying to share with everybody is that when you're building out your products, you know, think about like who you're truly serving, and then think about um, who you can attract or even have conversations with beforehand so that when you do launch a product, <clears throat> you know, uh, you, got, you got a group of people to actually launch to. Because again, I've just seen so many um, bloody startups sp spend time and money, right, into something that they think will do well because they've just focused on the product and then nothing. You know, and I've seen this in, in the BSV world too. A lot of folks are just it's heartbreaking. Like, yeah, it's so heartbreaking, right? And this is why I kind of went down uh, the path of understanding that like, um, actually, if you can identify a problem with a group of people, right? And you actually gather them around that sort of that problem or that issue uh, first, you can actually involve them in a co-creation process, right? Um, that informs a product and a much stronger product so that when the product launches, they're already invested in the idea and then they help become amplifiers too by the time the product um, is launched. You know, and uh, whether uh, people have realized or not, even folks like Unrider, um, the Twitch guys, um, Handcash, uh, they they had some relationships already in a group or a community, right? That's why they were able to, when launch, uh, launching, um, people were receptive because they either knew about them or knew what they were doing, and it wasn't just going to crickets. And um, unless you got something truly novel, right, like all these stealth startups, <laughs> very rarely, you know, going into stealth mode um, doesn't help a cause either, you know. So let me just bring up the screen again. So that probably uh, brings me to, oh, actually, I found the Handcash Friends thing, Kevin. So look at this. Oh, cool. This is January 27th. Somebody created a site called Handcash Friends. And essentially the idea behind this is it's a fan-made product, um, and they created a group of hand cashers who every time somebody new came on board they would ping the hand cash friends and all the people in the hand cash friends list or group would um would ha essentially help onboard a new uh um bs mm. right now this actually i think um there's it has legs to stand on in terms of a possible onboarding um solution in the sense that if you can create a culture whereby um, you have people coming on board into a BSV app or tool or a wallet and the issue is they don't have any BSV to begin with. If you can get the community to actually just fill up each other's wallets or have a mechanism that they, they do that for every new person that comes on board, they don't have to worry about technically buying BSV to get started, right? Uh, Underwriter's done a pretty cool job with Palping. Um, whereby it's a mix of on-chain and off-chain, right? So that people can still um, log into the app without requiring to pay BSV, but then they still do need BSV to do the tipping, right? And I think as part of the onboarding, if users or the community actually had some sort of function, maybe even within the app, that um, they all sort of share the love for newbies that come in to get, help get them started, then they can start earning as well. And they don't have to worry about, you know, going through the 
um, the fiat or railway um, in order to fill up their wallet. So what are your thoughts on Palping now that we've kind of segued into that? Okay, so yeah, so Palping's launch was interesting mm -hmm. because I think everybody was under the impression that uh, Unwriter is just building um, infrastructure, you know, just on the back end for yeah. uh, BSB apps. And then boom, he launches um, Palping, yep. which yeah. is a, a social media kind of uh, consumer app, mm -hmm. which I think surprised a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, he actually uh, reached out to me early on. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I guess he appreciates my feedback or appreciates my followers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, either 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 or. Um, um, but yeah, you know, I saw the app and um, yeah, it was a very well built app and it did something new. Mm. And um, yeah, so you know that kind of um, yeah, the wood was good, right? It was a well built app, and then. Uh, the fire was, you know, reaching out to people like me. But then also, yeah. I think Unwriter has, he's been here since the beginning. Yeah. And to me, he's probably one of the smartest, most prolific, uh, deepest thinkers, most original thinkers in Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, and he's he already has like a cult following. Yes. And also, yeah, exactly. he's, yeah, just, you know, his whole, you know, pseudonymous, uh, you know, aura. You know, there's a lot of mystery, you know, with him. So, yeah. No, he he has a great following, mm. um, just from you know how much impact and contribution he's had to the community. Mm. But also, he launched the uh, Atlantis Builders Collective exactly yeah, um, from the beginning, mm. which is on Slack, which mm. is you know everybody that wanted to build, um, you know went to his Slack to you know learn how to build applications using his um, his tools. Exactly. So he had. A, I think a strong community mm. and strong values, and um, and also he had a strong reputation. So I think Unwriter, yeah. So his values is about, you know, proof of work mm. and you know, not playing games and just launching and mm. just getting the work done and just like yeah, you know, showing what you've done. Yeah. Um. Uh, but also, like culturally, mm. I it's it's very interesting. You kind of always see like this interplay between you know or just a need for an ecosystem to balance itself. Mm. And I think Twitch was the popular social media thing at that time, and they're very brash and abrasive, and you know they don't give a you know they don't give a shit like what you think about them or whatever. Mm. Um, whereas Unwriter, I think he's a little bit more thoughtful and collaborative with people mm. and um yeah so so when when he launched it yeah it's very interesting to see that culture kind of just authentically um grow um and i and i think that's based on you know unwriters just very strong personality and yeah. stuff like that so yeah. so yeah his thing was very organic as well because you know palping was wasn't you know a thought or did not exist when unwriter was building out his community as yeah. well yeah exactly um i want to sh uh, share um, with everyone uh, this video which uh kind of helps sort of uh helps people see just like how each of these platforms take on a, a persona right and why they attract certain types and i thought it was very uh very relevant so uh not sure if uh, you've seen this or um if others who yeah i think might... you showed me yeah um, so I'll share this uh, for everybody and hopefully um, folks can hear it um, properly. I'm here, I have an announcement. We're going on vacation. That's right, kiddos, in the new minivan. And if you're curious, I have three easy steps on purchasing a used vehicle. Where are we going? Grand Canyon. My friend Deborah shared the most amazing blurry photos of their family vacay there. Oh my gosh, I love Grand Cayman. Goals. Um, I don't think, can, can we drive there? The only thing driving is our corrupt government driving me crazy. Grand Canyon, <laughs> and I know of 11 must-see views a lot of people don't know about. And the hotel? Didn't cost us a thing. <laughs> How I optimize my credit card's rewards program. I... What's up, you guys? What's going on? We're going on a stupid road trip, aka harming the environment with all the fuel emissions. Family vacation gone wrong? End of the earth? If we're gonna do it, can we at least get there by golden hour? Like, I'm kinda tired of using this thing. Natural light's best. I call DJ. Yeah, you got that yummy, yummy. Unpopular opinion, Justin Bieber has zero talent. Yeah, you got that yummy, 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 yummy. <laughs>
So y'all go pack. Here, here's ten things you're probably forgetting to pack on your next road trip. Can I, like, bring my boyfriend? Who is that? I've not seen him. I've not met him. I've not seen him on my feed. Lincoln. Lincoln who? Lincoln Bio. Does he have a junk? <laughs> Does he need one? He'll break your heart eventually, so. This is a family vacation, sweetie. Just the family. I'm excited, guys! Man, the last time we went on a road trip, the craziest thing happened. So, right when we were about- Ouch! Knee pain? Try CBD Plus. The first ever, not scientifically proven. This is why you let me handle the stories. Literally everyone forgets about your stories the next day. Uh, I call- Shotgun! Don't get me started on guns. <laughs> I get shotgun! Compared to the back, it's way better, and I do plenty of comparing, so... 13 items are for sale in your area. Hey, I'm the only one who can shoot, so I get shotgun. You know what? I get it. No, I do. Square up. Swipe up. Now, hey, hey! Now, kids! Zip it! I'm driving this ship, and I've been endorsed countless times on my driving, so I choose my co-pilot, and it'll be your mother. She's the one who keeps me on the road, and y'all's safety is my primary concern. You want to talk primaries? Well, my opinion is- I don't care where I sit, as long <laughs> as I can vlog, what's up, guys, and watch Do Perfect. Guys, how about this? For the road trip, I'll make my three-ingredient granola bars. We just ask that you guys would behave and be safe so we can enjoy- Okay, boring. Lost my attention. Retweet. <laughs> as the leader of this family, and my own business, and a startup, and a side hustle or two, I command y'all to behave. We don't want to lose another one of you. Your mother is feeling sad. His memories will forever live on. He was so young. Who? <laughs> you know, he reminds me of you. <laughs> oh my he God. needs some milk! Yeah, that was my bad. I don't care why I was I don't sit. I don't care where I could. Whoa. It's a weird three seconds. All right. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this thing cracks me up, but it's so relevant, um, in my opinion, to, you know, what we see even forming with, like, Palping and Twitch, right? Um, you can see sort of the, the different vibes. And, again, you know, Kevin, right, it goes back to family, right? You know, this is, this is the interesting thing that I, I find that a lot of all this stuff ends up revolving around the, the concept of yeah, family, community, etc. You know, even businesses, right? They're essentially, some of the best businesses are like family generational. You know, in Asia, they got a lot of family offices. You know, they have like their own sort of niche of like family type businesses. And I think um, there's a lot that we can learn um, from this too. Um, even just when interacting, you know, with folks like Twitch um, or PowerPing and whatever else that will come up um, in the future. So yeah, well, I mean, what were your thoughts, uh, I guess, to, to wrap things up, right? Like, on that video and its relation to what you're seeing uh, sort of growing within even the BSV ecosystem. Yeah, so basically every community has a distinct way, a distinct culture, yeah. a distinct uh, personality. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you, you can literally see it between Palping and Twitch, because mm -hmm. Twitch would be like, you know... We are gonna burn Twitter to the ground. Like San Francisco headquarters is gonna burn. Everybody's gonna burn, and then you know everybody's gonna escape to uh, <laughs> you know uh, you know Twitter. We're gonna be like uh, Twitch because we're gonna be like Noah's Ark, and they're like Sodom and Gomorrah yeah. or whatever. And there's gonna be a flood. They're all gonna be yeah. wiped out because they're just like insecure yeah. and just corrupt. Mm. Um, and then you hear uh, Unwriter, and Unwriter's like, "Let's play." <laughs> you know what, guys? I have nothing against Twitter, mm -hmm. and um, I feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. And we're not even trying to compete with Twitter, and you know we're just trying to do our own thing. You know, just have our own style, mm -hmm. and yeah, I just want everybody to play nice. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> you know, yeah, we we have a, we, en enough divisiveness in our in our society. I don't I don't want to add to it. Exactly. And yeah, that's the whole kind of distinct thing. Mm -hmm. And to me, I don't know personally. I I think. The world needs a little bit more palping right now, just mm -hmm. to balance the equation, because everything is everybody's at each other's throats. Correct. Yeah, when the world's like kind of like falling to shit, which we know, um, yeah. I think you know people will definitely probably... finding a healthy community. So, so here's the thing about families: is that mm -hmm. I think right now we're all in dysfunctional, unhealthy communities, and then we think it's normal. Mm. So I, I think if palping wants to lead the way mm. and say no, this is what a healthy, functional safe community is supposed to look like yeah. that uh yeah i hope 
they go that way. Yeah. However, I again, I do want to reiterate with like the palpings of the world mm. um, and the yeah, all the other BSV apps is I'm just gonna be real with you. Like, don't try to jump the shark right now. Empirically, what I'm seeing is your target market is BSV early adopters. Mm. And um, yeah, and just and just let it flow naturally from from there. Like, don't you know? Don't try to force people to talk about normal things mm. or whatever. Just, just let it occur uh, naturally. Because because I do think BSVers are you know the wokest in crypto, yeah. right? I think they're farthest ahead. So I think just naturally they're going to attract more like minds, mm. you know, more kind of um, you know very you know curious. Uh, thoughtful people so just allow these things just to happen naturally yep exactly because yeah i mean if you've got a strong like community there if we want to say like bsv is our a, a community yeah why do you want to be normal right? yeah like, exactly what, i mean already what, what's yeah by nature you're kind of outside of the normal anyways um if you're deciding to side with the bsv camp as we know um yeah from a branding perspective um but yeah i think there is that leap that's looking um to happen right as well from just being something that is uh, in a niche area um, yeah. to having mass appeal to, to the outside world. And I know that there is obviously efforts being made, you know, in the enterprise space, et cetera. Um, and that'll just be a very uh, sort of a different path, you know? Yeah. So so my view is that, you know, like, don't try to, like, if we're just a community of builders mm. and we're, you know, we're socializing, we're starting companies together mm. and we just build for ourselves, right? Yep. Like build you know, some type of audit or, you know, some type of, um, you know, application that helps you keep your word and so you can help trust people and stuff like that where you build, I, I think that'd be a, a great product. Yep. But then I, I, I caution people to kind of them kind of envying Facebook or Snapchat mm. or Twitter because from what I know, remember is that Facebook, their community was Harvard. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yep. So that I was believe. the community that they launched to, right? Mm -hmm. And so then Harvard is Harvard, right? That's mm -hmm. a very prestigious thing. And also it's a college. Mm -hmm. And that's a thing that most people do. Mm -hmm. And I think Snapchat was launched at Stanford, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, you know, the West Coast uh, version of Harvard. Yep. And I think, you know, Evan Spiegel saw, you know, people were sexting or whatever, and they wanted something more private, private. Um, and then he kind of launched it to there. And that kind of took off because a college is a, naturally a social and then I, I saw things like you know like um uh i don't know like these uh like, like yik yak i remember this app called mm. yik yak mm. to where it was like it's anonymous and then people would just start uh, gossiping yeah. and stuff or there was like secret or like yik yak and those were things like they were like launched in high school so those are like naturally social areas yep. and that's what it um that's what it appealed to mm. and i just want to be real with bs viewers that the community that we are on is in the community of builders, mm. technologists, and early adopters. And mm. I don't think that necessarily will uh, find a bridge mm. to normal people mm. because, yeah, you're a very specific niche group. Yeah. But I, I can see it just turning into um, a productivity community yeah. of companies or... Yeah, other other builders, maybe LinkedIn, similar to LinkedIn. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, no, exactly. And I remember even um, Snapchat, uh, not Snapchat, sorry, Instagram. Um, Instagram when they was creative, right? Yeah, photographers, photographers. exactly, photographers. Yeah. You know, that was their initial community that they started out. Airbnb, even. I remember um, they started out with um, a very a small group. I mean, of course, they were solving their own problem, but I remember they made a, a very big deal of spending time with their host families. Right or the the the, the host uh, owners, um, you know, who who are hosting um, people in their homes, and by focusing on that, they just listened to them, right, and kept building the product out, and then they created massive like advocates, you know, from them who then helped amplify. And uh, there was actually in um, on Monday I was talking about the power of niche groups, and this is something I think that yeah just often gets overlooked, and I think for anyone watching who is a builder is to you know seriously consider you know how you can create that for yourself too um around your product because i think more and more people are starting to understand this um and i think the more that they do uh, the more that they'll be able to uh launch successfully so um yeah okay i guess uh, maybe we'll wrap it up there but um 
is there any sort of final things that you wanted to share? Um, I guess just around this subject, or uh, you know, around successful product launches and leveraging communities. Yeah, I guess my whole thing is to to bring it back to realness and authenticity, mm. and not trying to force something to happen. Yeah. Um, the way that you know, I see, like, I, I kind of have a resistance to formalizing these processes, mm. you know, of like how to create a community or how to launch an app and stuff like that, mm. because my thing is that that sh that shouldn't be the prime mover. It should be the prime mover should be I saw a need, mm. or I have a group of friends. Mm. And yeah, we built. You know, we were working on this thing together, yeah. uh, just for each other. So, like the way that I kind of see it is, you know, like back in the day, you had people just like hang out in a garage mm. and either they're you know rapping or flowing or they're playing music, yeah. right? And then yeah, they're like, oh yeah, oh, that sounds good. And then mm. they're ripping off each other. Mm. And then there's oh, this is good. And then other people say it's good and stuff like that. It wasn't just like, oh man, I want to you know. I want to be, you know, a rocker, a rap star, and yeah, we need to figure out something that's gonna work, and mm. and then yeah, we're gonna you know try to create a you know a concert or whatever. It's just it's just like very kind of like um, yeah, very very um, very natural. So so I would say for the BS viewers that are following this, mm. you know, let's let's just keep things natural. Let's just hang out, and then as we find problems with the existing tools that we're using, maybe it's not anonymous enough. Or maybe you know uh, you're afraid of losing your data or whatever. It's like, well, maybe we could do this in a better way and just allow things to go, yeah, organically. Organically. Just don't forget that. Yeah, don't forget that. Yeah, I think it's it's true. I mean, I've noticed this as well that um, you know, there's obviously a lot of people who want to um, get a step by step you know playbook to building a community. Um, but you know, I'll admit as well, for many of the ones that I have uh, created or that I have helped create. There is more of a taking a anthropologist um, sort of stance with it, and the anthropologist um, way is, you know, just sort of immersing yourself in a group of people, learning, observing, and adapting as you go along, right? So maybe there's more if you were to look at like you know how to build a community. Uh, it's probably more guiding principles, right? Anchor points, are things to remember as you're going about, um, because you can also then start to see where. If you try to go by a playbook, you know it, it. It doesn't always come out the same way, you know. Just like sometimes recipes <laughs> for um, certain foods, uh, you know, depending on who the person is that's like uh, looking at the recipe, you you you'll still get some sort of like nuanced differences, right, in the outcome. Um, so I think that's sort of uh, what I've learned is that yeah, you're right. The the processes um, might not matter as much, but I think there are still some guiding principles. You know, and things to look out for along the way. Mm. Um, okay, and I guess uh, with that, brother, um, do you want to do the sign off again, uh, like you did last week, if you can remember it? <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. In life and in Bitcoin, with patience and persistence, it will come. <laughs> All right, thanks, brother, and thanks for those of you that have been uh, tuning in today, and uh, for anyone else who'll be uh, watching the recording. Um, and we'll see you guys next week, same time. Uh, if you have any ideas or things that you'd like for us to talk more about, just put it in the comments below. And uh, we shall chat soon. Um, and I think Richard here has just said uh, thanks. Uh, Richard, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you again soon. See y'all.